All right, today we'll talk about chemical bonds, uh, the geometry of molecules, how we look at uh, uh, valence electrons, and it's a really visual uh, unit. It describes how things get together and how electrons are uh, shared or moved from one atom to the next in order to create um, well, molecules. So a chemical bond is basically uh, a force between uh, two uh, negative, uh, between a negative and a positive uh, uh, particle. Uh, and it is uh, indeed a type of uh, a bond. It's a chemical bond. Uh, there are uh, some physical interactions. This is not in the book. So uh, when I have a positive and a negative and they kind of hang out, but they don't form a chemical bond, they have physical bonds. Uh, and uh, great examples of that would be uh, uh, intermolecular forces. So let's say a uh, gecko is walking around and climbing trees. The, uh, the intermolecular forces between the gecko's foot and the tree are what's uh, quote-unquote bonding the two together. It's not a chemical bond. It doesn't form a new chemical moiety, but it is, uh, it is still some sort of an interaction between the two. In chemistry, we're looking at uh, more permanent bonds, and we have two uh, particular examples here. Uh, this is in the book. Covalent bonds, that's when electrons are being shared between two atoms, and uh, ionic bonds, and this is the strongest form of, of, of bonds between, between elements, uh, and uh, this is when one element literally takes the electrons from the, from the other. Uh, and, they, and they form a very strong electrostatic force between the two of them, okay? So we're going to focus on two and three, covalent bonds. That's when two atoms share electrons, uh, and they form a chemical bond, and they form a new molecule. And ionic bonds are when uh, two atoms interact with one another. One of them gives up its electrons to the other, and they form a bond, a very strong bond between the two, and it is also a molecule. Uh, it's going to be an ionic molecule, whereas the other one's going to be a molecular, uh, a molecular type uh, molecule. Okay. There are also metallic bonds, which the book also does not uh, does not really focus on, uh, and that's just between metals. So over here, as you'd imagine, this is between two nonmetals. This is between a metal and a nonmetal for the most part. This is between two metals. We're not going to focus much on this. Uh, this is just like a free-for-all electron type thing when they all share their electrons. There are other types of similar bonds between semiconductors where it's similar to metallic but not as much. We're not focusing on this. This is this you will see and uh, this in semiconductors if you take material science. All right. What we're going to do, to, we're going to try to visualize things. So before I talk about bonds and what they look like, I need to show you how the electrons uh, are uh, arranged around an atom. So we know uh, the valence electrons, we've, we've studied them in previous chapters. We know uh, that if you look at group 1A, uh, that, that whole group, uh, each one of the atoms has one valence electron. Group 2 has 2, group 3 has 3, and so on and so forth. Uh, and so we, we use the periodic table to, to be able to inform us of the, of, the num, of the number of valence electrons. We can actually visualize this. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, put a dot for uh, each, each, each uh, valence electron that an atom has. So lithium is going to have one dot. And uh, since boron has two electrons, it's going to have two dots. And since... Uh, Nitrogen has five, it will have five. Uh, since fluorine has seven, it will have seven. And since neon has eight, it will have eight. And this is how we write, uh, this is uh, the, the most it should have for the most part, because as the periodic table and as the electric configurations show you, there are only up to eight uh, valence electrons that could be around an atom, okay? The way we draw that, as this guy show tells you, one does not simply draw the Lewis dot structure. Uh, look at the X here, I'll show you here. Let's say I have one, I will write one. So for lithium, I'll put one. Let's say I have two, uh, I will write one, two. One, two. By the way, this boron is missing a dot here. I have a dot right here. Uh, if I have three for boron, it will look like this. One, two, three. So, on, so, so far, so good. For four, I have one, two, three, four. When I have five, like nitrogen, I'll put the dot up there. And then six, then seven, then eight. We don't 
do it so that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We distribute it around and then we add yet yeah, the second. We do we go around the clock twice. Okay. Uh, and there's this thing called the octet rule. And the octet rule says that they're all striving to look like this. They all want to look like that. Meaning that fluorine kind of wants another electron. And once it gets it, it's going to be happy. It's going to look like neon. And lithium could either just gain seven, which is kind of hard to do, or it will say, you know what? I can give up this electron and I will still look like this. And it's going to be great. Uh, and we look as stable. So um, uh, th that's basically the rule we're going to be seeing when things start bonding. Let's look at examples and see how... Uh, how we, we write this. And I mean, I think it was pretty clear from the examples I had in the PowerPoint, but let's just see, let's say someone asks you to write, write the Lewis dot diagram. For let's say aluminum. So I look at the periodic table, this is in group three a. And so I know that I have three valence electrons. Okay, so for three valence electrons, I'll have three, one, two, Three, okay. Let's say I have uh, iodine, I am, I have seven, seven valence electrons. Okay, so I have I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and beryllium, this has two valence electrons, and so it will be one, two, okay. So that's, that's, I think, pretty simple. Okay, uh, let's, let's talk ionic bonding. So that's the, that's the strongest type of bonding, as we mentioned. That's when one uh, atom gives up its electron or electrons to another. And this will happen, uh, again, to try to satisfy the octet rule so that they all have eight. Okay, so sodium says, if I give up one of my electrons, I will have the eight previous ones. I'll have eight. I will be pretty happy. Chlorine says, man, I'm really jonesing for one more. So when they come and hang out together, uh, sodium says, just take mine. I don't need it. And it gives it to it. And sodium gets to be an octet type looking thing like the neon, like the, like neon before it. And chlorine also looks like uh, uh, a, a noble gas this way. And uh, this has eight, satisfies the octet rule. This has zero or eight. It's the same type thing. Um, and it's uh, satisfying the octet rule. We write this as a positive because it lost an electron, and we put a bracket around this and write a negative, uh, and this uh, this shows you that, that it gained an electron. Okay, this is how you, you would write, uh, if someone asked you to write the schematics or the formation of an ion or an ionic formation. So let's, let's try to look at that, an ionic bond. Let's say uh, someone asked you to show the formation of uh, Al2O3, okay? Let's say I, I, I look at that. So I know that I have aluminum, as we just showed that in the example, has three, so it will look like this, one, two, three. And oxygen has six, so it will look like one, two, three, four, five, six. If I look at this, oxygen wants two more, uh, and aluminum has three, so um, I mean, it could give it to it, but then it will be stuck with one and doesn't want that. That's why we have a whole bunch of them. So I'll have two aluminums, and I'll have three of the oxygens. And so what this does to me uh, is that um, they can all kind of uh, be taken now. All six of these can be taken because if six electrons are taken from the aluminums, uh, it, they can be distributed among the three oxygens so that each of them gets a, gets two. So be one, two, go here, and then one, two, go here, and then uh, uh, one, two, go back here. So I'll have, the, the oxygens will have six. So uh, basically, I will, look, I will look like this. I will have two aluminums, okay? Uh, and these will be plus three because they each one gave up. Uh, there are three electrons, and I have three oxygens, and oxygen will look like this, and we'll be pretty happy. It will look like the octet rule now. 
uh, and then this is negative two. Okay, so this is important to show the two and the three, and this is how you show the ionic formation for that. Uh, this one was is completely stripped of its valence electrons; it gave it up, uh, and then this one is completely filled up to the, and they both satisfy the octet rule. This one goes to the one before it, this one goes to the one uh, afterwards, uh, and they both satisfy the octet rule. Okay, uh, so so that's nice, right? Let's go back here. Uh, so to, to draw Lewis diagram for ionic compounds, you draw the Lewis diagram for the individual elements, distribute the metals valence electrons to the nonmetals to follow the octet rule, and enclose nonmetals in square brackets and put the charge up. Uh, and, and that should be it, okay? Uh, and then uh, the, this is just another example of this. Uh, if you wanna draw the Lewis dot diagram for K2O, uh, you draw the Lewis dot diagram for K and for O. O wants to have eight, so uh, uh, donate an electron from each of the K, Ks and enclose O in brackets and denote charges for all. So I have K dot, K dot, and then O six dots. Okay, so each one of these will give up their electrons uh, like that. See, now they're happy they, they got taken away. And then I have to enclose this in brackets and I'll write, uh, either I write like this or I can write two K plus uh, and then just like this for O minus, O minus two, okay?